Welcome to a Week 18 Giants Hangout brought to you by Crestron, the season finale of our Thursday edition of the Giants this Hangout. Is this is it. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened, friends. I'm Madeline Burke alongside Jonathan Casillas and Brandon London, as always. And guys, we're wrapping up the season with the Giants-Eagles MetLife Stadium. Uh, the NFC East is kind of on the line here because the Giants... Uh, well, the Giants are out of it, but the Eagles need a win and a Cowboys loss to the Commanders to clinch the NFC East for the second year in a row. Of course, the Commanders are starting Sam Howell uh, again, so they'll you know try to keep that one spicy. But we'll see how this one goes. We got last game of the season. It might rain. It might snow at MetLife Stadium. A lot on the line. Zeus, how are you feeling about the finale? A lot on the line for not the Giants, but... Well, in life. You know, a lot on the line to play spoiler. I guess to play spoiler is what I meant. Yeah, a lot on the line in terms of spoiler. And also, there are several players that, you know, could be playing their last game in a Giants yeah, uniform. True. You know, Sterling Shepard has expressed that. Um, some other players have said, sad. Yeah. I don't want to see him anywhere else. Well, I think you know? Shep, I think Shep, if he's, if he's, he's studied, calling it, he's calling it a career, you know. And I mean, Brandon, you and I came in here in the broadcast category yeah, with this team the yeah. same season that Shep was a rookie. So, yeah, I, I just remember like being in the locker room with them and I used to do those know your giant pieces and like some of like back then, you know, the team was at times the team would be good and all or 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 they'd be going through something. You know how the players just want to leave that locker room. Jo Jonathan Casillas being one of them players that was like, yeah, I got to get an interview with Casillas. He already on route three. Uh, <laughs> but Shep was always those dudes like, yeah, what do, you, what do you need? What do you want? The personality always came out. And then, you know, I said it before I told some people was when I found out that I was having a baby, I went up to him and told him, you know, because he has his two daughters and he dapped me up, gave me a hug and was like, get ready to get no sleep and all in that yeah. sense. <laughs> you know, one thing about working in-house with the Giants and having access to the players and Madeline for as long as we did, it's kind of a gift and a curse because I know we're media and we're supposed to be indifferent when we're talking about guys and all, but we spend a lot of time with these dudes. We spend a lot of times when the beat writers are leaving and they're leaving the locker room we're still there watching them play ping pong still there just chopping it up with them or we're off location somewhere and it's like you know you do a, a something with Saquon or, or one of the players that really don't want to talk so you got to hype it up you got to get going and then you just give them the microphone for them to say their three words and everybody's like oh you guys totally killed it so spent a lot of time with these guys man and uh I guess the wide receiver in me and seeing that energy that Shep brings every game day and out and the professionalism that he's handled the injuries and then them drafting his replacement and a Wandell Robinson seeing the way that he's handled things and and how he got himself back and ready for this year you know it's it's going to be something that really really hits you know a lot of us uh, uh in that sense so i'm glad that he's been the consummate pro he's been a great guy within that locker room uh three more catches for him to be fifth all time uh to, to pass jeremy so shockey is fifth all so time great Dude, yeah. give him a two so bubble screen two bubble screens and a hitch let That's my man it, get man. all let time him, you know let him cook yeah let him do that too man and you know he's one of the only guys like in the entire league that's the league that I play with. Yeah. You know, he's definitely the, oh, you know, wow. the, the only giant where well, Pee is too. Um, you know, that was my teammate when I was there. And, you know, he came in on fire. I think the first game was against the Cowboys. He had a touchdown in his first career game. We're in number 87. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's always been that consistent guy. And him going down last year, turned into the biggest cheerleader in the league. Right. And, uh, and custom T-shirts made for each of those He was definitely a vital part. Even though he didn't play that much because he got hurt pretty early in the season, right? Halfway through or something like that? Yeah, October. But he was a vital reason why the Giants had success last year because the energy he had on the sidelines and, like you said, a consummate pro, really not playing and getting targets like that like he once was. Like his rookie year, he came and getting targets right away. And that has slowed down a lot, a lot due to injury, back to back to back injuries, serious injuries. And to see him kind of how he's handling himself at the media, with social media, like, you know, in the locker room, like you gotta, you gotta just tip your hat to him, man. And, you know, I, I hope if he does retire or, or shut it down, if he's not playing football no more, 
I hope he comes on this side and come hang out with us on this side. Well, and I know that I, I, I have talked to Chip about this too. He does want to get into broadcasting and he's pretty good at it too. I mean, he came on, he's a character. He came on a show that we did with prime video. Yeah. Uh, he's, you know, he's done a lot of stuff. He'd, he'd be great. Yeah. Yep. You better not want to him see because him see's locked up for another two years. Brandon is trying so hard to make trying so hard to make fetch happen. Him see him Giants TV is not gonna draft my replacement, bro. They already did it when they when they drafted Mario Manningham the next year. Well, it wasn't really my replacement because I ain't really play that that, that yeah. you know, I was on the practice squad the year before. But we're not going through this again, Giants. We're mm -hmm. not gonna do it. We're mm -hmm. not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there on the field that are looking forward to uh, kind of setting the tone for what to build on for next season. You know, some of these young guys, we're seeing the young wide receivers like Wondale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt kind of getting... Wondale Robinson can play some football. Exactly. And now that he's healthy and really getting some uh, regular like, reps. He's a, a little faster than I thought because mm -hmm. I knew he was always quick twitch, you know, in and out, kick, 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 make somebody miss. And he, he had that mental like that. Like he... He plays a lot bigger. He he plays bigger than he really is. Mm -hmm. Like he tries to run through people, and it's like you're not running through. Bro, you're he like gets into it. But he plays with that physical yeah. mentality. And then a couple of plays last week, I'm just sitting there like, oh, he's fast, fast. Yeah. I know he was decently fast. You know how it is, B. Some yeah. guys are like like Tyreek Hill, right? That's like incredible speed, right? There's some guys like that are like long striders, like even like a Jalen Hyatt. Like Jalen Hyatt, he don't look that fast until that ball's in the air going 40 yards, and then he, all of a sudden he looks like the fast person on the field. Well, because he just makes it look so mm -hmm. easy, and then you clock the GPS, and you're going, you can't even right. run that fast in a school zone. Right. It's like, like 22, 23, but Wandell, he can get to that speed very quickly. Right. Like, yeah. real quick. Burst, like yeah. That. And now he's at that top speed, and he showcased it last weekend. That's somebody I'm like, okay. I knew they drafted him high last year. I knew it was for a reason. Got hurt mm -hmm. pretty early last year. Hurt again coming into this year. Yeah. And now you're looking at him now. It's like, okay, like this kid is definitely going to be a, a vital point moving forward with the Giants for, I think, a pretty long time. Yeah. Which is why I would love to see he and Jalen Hyatt get multiple targets this game. You know, a lot of people are talking about, oh, you don't win this game there's a possibility that the giants lose they could get up to two depending on who else loses i believe the titans a lot of these teams but you know jc as a player i'm not thinking about that i'm thinking about if i'm again sterling shepherd three more catches saquon barkley 84 yards to a thousand darius slayton i gotta drive that number up you know he's a 15 yards per catch type guy there's a lot of guys that are playing to kind of build and to go into the off season with like all right, the season didn't go the way we wanted personally as a team, but I can at least take little things, take moments away from the season. For me, that one, I got better at, two, I dominated at, and three, I can go back and look at what I need to work on going into the offseason. So when we talk about Wandale Robinson, when he came in the league, his receiver coach at Kentucky, Scott Woodward, was my backup quarterback at UMass. His OC, Liam Cohen, was my uh, quarterback. At, at at UMass. So when we drafted him, they automatically texted me and was like, you're you getting yourself a dog. Like That's he plays up. a lot bigger than what he is. So when we're coming into this game and you got the wounded Eagles, kind of what we were talking about the Eagles two weeks ago. And then you get the game where they go down to the wire, it comes down to the last play, phantom call or not, or whatever it was, they played them tough at the link. This is one of those ones where forget saying, oh, we're going to win this game to build on next year. With all these free agents on this team, it's going to be a completely different roster yeah. next year. So yeah. this is your last time, like they say, uh, Jonathan, this is the last time these 53 guys are going to be together. Last time, because the following day is garbage bag day. You guys are going to say peace out, and then you're headed to Cancun or wherever it is that you're going to go for your vacation. So, and garbage bag day, of course, for people not familiar, means you know, guys bringing the garbage bags, clean out their lockers, and get out of the facility. And they're like, all right, this is a wrap on this era of the 2023 season. Yeah, that's and that's such a, a hard day. Yeah, that's a hard, yeah, that's a yeah, hard day because. Like you, you understand. And some guys are gonna know at that point. Like, okay, yeah. this is it. This is final. And some guys are gonna be like, all right, am I cleaning this out? And will I be back? Or right. will my locker be at a different point in the locker room right. next year? Or you my, know what's yeah. so funny too? Like, if you're done with that team, mm -hmm. like you don't go back. Like yeah. you just don't go back. They send yeah. all your stuff, right? B. They just 
They just send all your stuff, your equipment, your your, your hopefully I would send your helmet, your shoulder pads, whatever. They send all your cleats, your deodorant, and you left in the locker room. Like that's it. It's over. You're done. You don't even get to clean it out yourself. It depends. Like yeah. if you're in, if you're working out, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and yeah. all of a sudden you go to another team. And you were like, oh. Oh, yeah. You're talking about I like if you're in a trade right, or something like that. I yeah. No, I was going to mm -hmm. go over here. But like, I'm talking about like, you know, players that are still, you're on a roster until what, March? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people are still on a roster until March. You're still a part of the team. Right. And then you could go to another team and you've been working out at the facility the whole time. Like, and then all of a sudden you're on another team. He's like, hey, why don't we get my stuff? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. If you're a guy like Tommy like DeVito, that. if you're DeVito, Jalen Hyatt, those guys, you're going to keep your stuff there. You're just going to take, you know, here's some gloves from my little brother or, yeah. you know, my high school football coach. And you know, we talked a lot about the offense, but the defense, uh, you know, got to give a hat to Dexter Lawrence, second consecutive Pro Bowl appearance uh, um, for Sexy Dexy. The only one, Saquon. Saquon is a second alternate. Kayvon Thibodeau is a third alternate. Uh, but that's also what happens when you're a team that, when they are playing on primetime, they've struggled. So I think yeah. Pro Bowl is a popularity contest. Yeah. And if you're not one of the flashiest uh, players right. when when the lights are on, that'll come into play. But Dexter Lawrence, it's hard to miss what he's been doing. A game wrecker in this league. And, you know, the defense, obviously, all season has been a strength for this team. Wink Martindale talked about it this morning, saying, you know, he's been really pleased with what he saw from the defense this season. Um, the takeaways, of course, the point of pride – how the defense responded in hard situations, a point of pride. Now Dane Bell and, and Jason Pinnock can go back and forth on who's going to be that starter. He's earned a starting job for the next year, or at least to compete for a starting job. Well, Dane Belton? Dane Belton. And then we talk about Cordell Flott, how much better that he got. That yeah, that good. other cornerback spot yeah. might be up. When you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen with the Dory Jackson. Obviously, Tate Banks had himself a year. Trey Hawkins, the third. You got Nick McLeod out there right yeah. now as cornerback, too, who's been playing. Like, I don't know how he didn't make the Pro Bowl for special teams. I don't know yeah, how Bobby, have a good Carrick, on teams. Mm -hmm. Bobby O'Karake didn't make the Pro Bowl either, you know, which is which is crazy as well. Hey, started, a lot of good middle linebackers, though, in, in the NFC, though. A lot of good linebackers. You got two in San Fran. You got, I would think, in Baltimore. That's, that's, that's AFC. That's, that's AFC. Oh. I can't think of anybody else. A lot of people you still got uh, the guy in Seattle. You still got him. Yeah, Bosa. He wags. Yeah, Bobby Wagner. Wags. I'm thinking of middle linebackers. Oh, yeah, middle linebackers, not yeah, just – yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, you know, um, but still, so, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You got to keep this defense intact. And then you, that allows you to be aggressive in free agency when it comes to a proven lineman. And then you can draft – your future when it comes to possibly running back, quarterback, wherever it is you need, and another another pass rusher, another edge rusher for you sure. You always use pass rushers and always use corners. The yep. way this league is, no matter what your pass rush looks like, you could always use an extra one. And what what you, whatever your defensive backfield looks like, you could always use another corner. More corners than safeties, but you could always need a you yeah. always need another cover guys. You need cover guys. This yeah. league has evolved to a passing league. Commanders, they used to be a running team. Now they're throwing the ball 70% of the time. Dak's going to throw the ball 35 times a game. You know, you got to have a healthy pass rushers that can rush, shoot, 40 to 50 times a game. And then and also guys that can cover. You got CeeDee Lamb in the slot. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to have corners all over the place. So, for me, with the, with the Giants, with the draft, I don't really care how they go. I just want them to get an impact player like they got in the two impact players they had in the first two rounds. John Michael Schmitz mm -hmm. and Banks. They yeah. got two impact players. I mean, higher yeah. too. They just didn't target them that much. Sure, but they, you know, and they got impact players at, you know, late round mm -hmm. picks, which I think also shows that for all the people saying, oh, well, you gotta you gotta lose this game to get a higher draft pick, whatever. Wherever you pick, with you've got, you know, if you've done your due diligence, there are a lot of talented players. And if wherever you pick, if you find the right player, yeah. you can find talent later on as well so hey b have you ever heard of a player a former player like me and you say something about a team tanking you ever heard that before from a player i've never heard exactly. that before in my exactly life. right because you know it's, it's, never, it's always really fans. It's always like, fans. They're, they're, yeah it's like that's so stupid that they're winning games what are you what are you talking about, i don't bro? think i don't think there's any player or coach in their right mind that would take a football field thinking oh let's go out there and lose this game like, like what, what a chance yeah. Well, yeah. yes. I'm sure you don't even like let your daughter win in like Jenga. Like, 
There's no more like, oh, you did it, good, baby. No, no it's like, no, like, better. Should have did better. Try better harder. Learn. Better learn. <laughs> and we that, play and that, to win the Jenga. And this is two undrafted free agents saying that, knowing right. that if I'm on that field, like I got, I got on the field with the Miami Dolphins. If I'm gonna get that, if if I'm gonna get that rock, if Chad Pennington was gonna call my name for me to catch the ball, four catches in a playoff game against the Ravens, I'm gonna come down with that thing. I'm gonna come down with that thing. You know what I mean? So, and then again, if you're Darius Slayton, am I gonna drop this deep ball? Like it, it, it's just because we want to get comes down to losing games. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know what I'm saying? And then like fumble the ball, like miss tackles. Like, well, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Put that on tape for the right. other 31 teams to see. Not only am I going to get cut here, somebody else not going to want me. So I'm going to do that. So you can go get Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, all right. Right. And for the yeah. limited fans that's watching this program, right? How does it make sense to like fumble the season away as a player mm-hmm. when 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 you don't play well as a player or as a group? People get fired. Right. And if you're fumbling the season away as a player, you're doing so to make way for your potential replacement. 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 To yeah. so, for somebody to come <laughs> take your job. Yeah. No, no, no sense. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Never. So the Giants are going to try to win this game. Number, Absolutely. Number one, because they should. Number two, because they can. Number two, because they can. And you know what? It's always going to feel good to win against a division opponent. You know, you talk about shows. Be good for Shep to finish strong. How many if, times he beat the Eagles in his whole career? Like twice. Twice. Maybe? Yeah, both at MetLife already. But I mean, you think about the fact that, like, you know, you're closing that talent gap, right? You want to win more games in the NFC East. Last year, they won one and tied one. This year, they've won two against Washington. Can they get a third against Philly? Like, beat the Cowboys or, or Eagles. And even if it is against an Eagles team without XYZ players, it's still a game that you're playing what on a missing? football field. There's Slay, of course. conversation. Yeah, Slay, because he's dealing with that knee injury, but there's conversation. Nick Sirianni has floated the idea of potentially yes, yes. resting starters because of the fact that he doesn't believe, or in, in theory, if he, if he doesn't believe the commanders will beat the Cowboys, win or lose, the Eagles are going to be that five seed yeah. in the playoffs. So there's a possibility that some players might get rested. I think they're going to start them all, and then Martin start Tardini. them all. Yep, try and get Martin them out by Tardini. halftime. They're, yeah. He's going. They're going to throw everything at them, and I believe that they're going to throw some some junk in there to get other teams in the playoffs to start trying to prepare for right. some stuff for some false stuff in there. So uh, Wink Martindale and that and that Giants defense is going to have a tough task because yeah, you played them two weeks ago, but I see them kind of making adjustments and and being able to throw some junk in there for the for the teams that they're going to be facing in the playoffs but yeah uh jc i think they're going to come out and they're going to try and lower the boom or you hope because it's raining and the weather's going to be bad you want giants fans to come out because if if and when they're playing this team tough and we get down to the end like we did against the rams you want that crowd noise the way it was, yeah. you know, uh, when when that deep when defense got to stop, Bobby O'Karake came in with that sack on uh, Matthew Stafford that made them punt for the uh, for the for the uh, the kick ret- the punt return for a touchdown. My bad, y'all. My, my words been also- been all day. That's all right, but it's also too. It's only two weeks ago that these two teams played each other. Yeah. And yep. that one was pretty close too, the way that second half panned out too. And I think that both of these teams are a little bit like, all right, that's fresh. That's very fresh. And, like, and Dallas lost four of the last five. So no, it's, Philly. Philly lost. Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, you said Dallas. Philly Sorry. Lost. He's Philly. still in Thailand. I'm still in Thailand. Uh, Man. But like the Cardinals beat the brakes off of them. Oh, like, Cardinals. Was, like the, the, the Cardinals were down it's 20 also to Jonathan six at Gannon. the half. It's also it was Jonathan close. Gannon. Look at the stats. Jonathan Gannon, though, former Eagles coordinator, yeah. now coaching the Cardinals. Like, big, you know. You yeah. know, like physically. They ran for the 200 oh, something yards. Connor had whatever, 150. Mm-hmm. Michael Carter was running guys over, getting in the end zone. Michael like, Carter. they physically beat the Eagles. And that, for mm-hmm. me, was like, the Giants got to see that in feelings. Like, come on, yo. Yeah. They're better mm-hmm. than the Cardinals, the Giants are. Mm-hmm. You know, the Giants, they had a good second half against the Cardinals. But the Giants, I feel like, the Giants can run the ball if they just be creative about it with anybody because you have one of the best running backs in the league. You don't have you don't have to have one of the best old lines. You just got to be creative. Yep. You know, and the best old line. Be creative, O-lines, be decisive right. with the ball moving quick. The and- best old line will give you, we have a play that you can't stop. We're going to keep running over and over and over again. The Giants don't have that. Right. What they do, they have a, a, a running back that can do stuff like he did last week with that spin move. 
And and I mean he's a he's a great threat from in the receiving throughout the backfield. Like you can do so many different ways. He's better than Connor. You know what I mean? Like Saqu and I just feel like the Giants, they gotta get going against this team. What is it about the Eagles that the Giants can't get over the hump? But everybody else is beating them now. <laughs> like it's almost like having the yips too, because you mentioned four out of the last five. What's the one? Right. It was the Giants game. Yeah. I'm going so on. it's all right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. it's nap time the, but that's all right and that is why that. too the giants are looking at this and looking at that stretch and saying like okay this is an eagles team that's limping into the postseason this is our opportunity to get this win and whether or not <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> sweep the leg whether or not it counts whether or not it affects the draft stock if nothing else winning you know as a player as a coach as an organization you want to win games going into the offseason with a win with a positive performance is good momentum i don't care what anybody says about like oh yeah you pick up next season it's a whole new season yes but going into the offseason feeling like okay you know what ending it on a high note ending it on a positive note putting something on tape that says this team has potential to build off of and go somewhere and that's also that's good for the future of this team. That's good for potential free agents who are looking at this and saying, you know what, I could come in and be that tipping point for this team. I could help that unit. I see that they are close and I could help them get to the winning column more often. That is a positive thing. I don't care what anybody says about tanking. Winning games is a good thing. Absolutely. Trans Especially against a team you haven't really beat in a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Translation. Everything you said, Madeline, it translate to what they tell us our first day in the building. You are being evaluated at all times. At all times. And all. it's like Michael Jordan always said, there's always someone in the gym who's never seen you play. You know, yeah. your first impression on them, you want it to be a good one, right? So as these players, as these teams, as individuals, you were like, all right. I miss playing football. This is who I am. You do? Yeah, this is Get one out of those there. They might need you on this Sunday. Those games. I, 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 ain't to, I ain't saying oh, I want to play. Oh, oh, I said okay. I miss playing. Mm -hmm. It's different. See what happened. Don't, don't, don't cry because it's over. <laughs> Smile because it happened. Much like this season on the Giants Hangout brought to you by Crestron. <laughs> Any final thoughts or words heading into week 18, Brandon London? Uh... No, nah, not really. It's just I want to thank Pearson. I want to thank Schmelk, the guys, uh, the, all the behind the scenes people who kind of, you know, listen to us sit here and hang out and then cut it and put it out there. Giants fans for listening, coming up to me during the games, talking about, you know, you and JC going back and forth. And, oh, Madeline with the one liners and all that. You guys are listening. You guys are watching. We appreciate you all, all the love. And uh uh, it, it's, it didn't go the way we wanted, obviously, but at the end of the day, Big Blue, man, like you guys, you guys, you guys make him see. There would be no him see without you guys. So appreciate you guys. I'm sure there would be a him see somewhere. you find a way. Oh, oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> no doubt. I, I agree, bro. Uh, thank you to all the listeners. This is the last show for the Hangout. This man. is our last Hangout. There will be a Monday edition following week 18's yeah. game, but for our group, for this group, for the yeah. Thursday squad... I mean, Best the A team. A -team. Dang. Well, shout out to all the fans that's been tuning Practice in. Practice squad again. Dang. <laughs> Mario Manningham will be on the next episode. <laughs> Yo, if Shep's on the hangout next year, I we're gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do like rookie hazing. Hey, go carry my go go carry my microphone, rookie. Good luck no? with that. <laughs> uh uh. Oh, that's it though, right? That's a wrap. That's, that's the right. way the cookie crumbles. It's been a blast hanging out with you guys every Thursday right here on the Giants Hangout. Brought to you by Crest John for Brandon London for Jonathan Casillas. I'm Madeline Burke. Game day when game day Wednesday. Game day Sunday. Let's go. No, I just I'm sitting next to you long enough. I don't even know. What day is it? Who knows? It's January. It's 2024. One more game in the books. Let's go. Giants Eagles Sunday afternoon. Hopefully we'll see you out there at MetLife.